Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is an anti-haul because I have some serious thoughts about some new releases that Sephora has been pushing out and I'm not impressed with their holiday collection so far. I did go to a launch party on Saturday, so this past weekend, and Eh. Sephora originally said that they were going to preview all of their holiday collections and it turns out they previewed about a handful of them. So it didn't give me a robust look at everything that's coming out for the holiday season, but I saw enough to know me no likey. Then I got to talking with Nicole. If you don't know who Nicole is, make sure to check out her channel. I'm going to link it up somewhere here as well as in the description box below. And she and I were chatting about how disappointed we've been with the holiday sets coming out mostly because there's been nothing new. It's the same shit coming out over and over again and I guess this is where my anti haul sort of comes into play. Typically I'm all over these sets but this year I think I'm really gonna take a step back and evaluate what it is that I'm gonna purchase and why. I feel like I'm gonna get a little bit of heat for some of the products that I'm gonna talk about and the things that I have to say about them but you come to my channel for the honest to goodness truth and this is really what I think about these items. So if you're interested in finding out what I am not hauling this holiday season, keep on watching, subscribe, like the video, and comment below. I have my handy little notebook here with me, so if I'm looking down, this is exactly what I'm glancing at because I've got a lot of notes here for you. The first item that I'm gonna be talking about is a Sephora Favorites kit. I do wanna start off by saying I love Sephora Favorites boxes because they usually include a lot of great items that I am excited to try out. But recently I've been finding it's the same boxes coming out over and over again with the same color schemes, the same products, there's nothing new being included. And so that is why, or at least that is one of the reasons why I am putting the Superstars kit in this anti-haul video. It's valued at 90 Canadian dollars and it does include several items. So it's got the ABH Brow Wiz in there, you've got Champagne Pop from Becca, there is a small thingy of the Magic Cream from Charlotte Tilbury, a Dior Mascara, a Fenty Primer, Kat Von D Lipstick, there's the Laura Mercier Powder which I feel is in every damn favorites box. Like good lord can we get another powder up in here. There's the Smashbox Primer, a Stila Metallic Glue glitter thingy, you guys know what I'm talking about, the Too Faced Primer, the Urban Decay Eye Pencil, and a free Sephora customized makeover. Now I'm just going to cross my arms here and sit for a second because why the hell are you going to include a free voucher for a makeup to Sephora when they already do that for free? Now hold up, I know exactly what you're going to say, but Demetra, normally you have to have a minimum purchase of $50 or whatever it is in order to get the free makeover. Or if you're Rouge, you can get it for free. If you're VIB, you get a couple per year. If you're just a beauty insider, well, you've got to make that minimum purchase. Whatever. If you just go into Sephora and you ask somebody to do a smoky eye for you, they're going to do it no charge. If you ask somebody to do your foundation for you, they're going to do it no charge. They don't charge you for these things. So why would you put in a voucher for a free makeover in this damn box? If you're going to put a voucher in there for anything, it should be for a full size product of one of the items that you're including in the box, which I know you've done in other boxes. So why can't you do it for this one? I don't get it. But that's the main reason why I am not picking up this box for myself. I think it is a waste of $90, especially since I already have all of these products. I've played around with them. I guess if someone out there is new to makeup and they just want to try a bunch of different things, sure, they might want to pick up this box. But for someone who has already tried a crap ton of makeup, this isn't the box for me. The next item I'm going to talk about comes from a brand that I actually love. I use a lot of their skincare products, but this product in particular disappointed me tremendously. And Herbivore, I have a problem with you now. What is up with your damn jade roller? A jade roller, mind you, that is priced at 38 Canadian dollars. 
what gives you the damn right to price something at $38 when you know I can go to Marshalls, I can go to Winners, TJ Maxx, any other store and find the exact same thing for anywhere between $5 to $10. $38? Really? Also, I've never really understood the benefits to jade rolling. Is it supposed to help spread your creams out, help your skin absorb serums better? Is it supposed to firm your skin? I don't know. To be honest with you, I'd rather roll ice cubes up and down my face and pretend it's doing the exact same thing. I would rather buy Kylie's overpriced, stupid makeup brushes before I buy this damn jade roller. Real talk though, I would never buy that brush set. But what I'm saying is the purpose of it seems a little bit ridiculous and superfluous. I don't think anybody needs that in their life, especially myself. And at $38, I think it is way overpriced. So herbivore, love your skincare, strongly dislike this jade roller, and I ain't buying. The next item comes from Natasha Denona. And y'all know I am not afraid to spend a pretty penny on a great eyeshadow palette. I have purchased the Lila palette, I have purchased the Tropic palette, and you know, they're they're good eyeshadow palettes. Am I gonna say they are extraordinary and there is nothing else like them on the market? Absolutely not. Am I gonna say I was a little batshit crazy when I spent $162 plus tax when I bought each of those palettes? You're fucking right I am. First of all, I think there are maybe two shadows in that entire palette that I would actually enjoy playing with. Secondly, Natasha, who do you think you are, Viziard? Number three, ever since Natasha changed up her formula, it just feels really different from her older palettes that she came out with a while ago, even from her five pan eyeshadow palettes, which you guys know I have a bunch of. Um, I feel like the current matte shadows, especially the ones that I worked with in the Tropic palette, they're good, but they're not phenomenal. I would rather spend my money on the Dose of Colors 5 Pan eyeshadow palettes and let them blend out themselves rather than having to work at blending out these shadows here. Basically, this boils down to a palette that has the most uninteresting colors for me. And secondly, the price point. I don't think I will ever spend $162 on an eyeshadow palette ever again. I am totally taking Stephanie Nicole's and Ripley saying whenever they talk about Natasha Denona, they call her Natasha Denono because oh no no no, I ain't spending that cash. Moving on to Tarte. I actually have a couple of items from Tarte that I am not picking up this season because I just think they are ridiculous. So the first item is the let's Flamingle brush set. Okay, clever play on words, but that's about where the cleverness ends. <laughs> this is valued at $57. You get five brushes that look ridiculous. They don't seem practical. I have no idea where I would store them. Apologies to anyone who has ever purchased Tarte brushes <laughs> like that before, but what I'm trying to say is that I would never purchase that brush set at that price point. To be honest with you, I ain't looking to spend any more than a couple of dollars per brush, especially if they're just going to be ornamental, which I feel like that's what these brushes are all about. I don't have $57 to just be throwing around on stupid shenanigans that look like a flamingo standing on one leg. I would rather go to the dollar store or Michaels and pick up paint brushes that you can get for a ridiculously affordable price and use paint brushes to paint this face. It will certainly be a lot easier on your pocketbook. If Tarte, by some miraculous reason, comes across my video and sees what I'm saying about their particular products, I really hope they take this into consideration and use it as constructive criticism for future releases because the palette that I am most disappointed with, and this is from their holiday set, it is the Pineapple of My Eye Collector Set. It is valued at 77 Canadian dollars and it's listed as having a value of 454 Canadian dollars. How in tarnations are you going to tell me that this whole palette here is valued at 454 dollars? What damn planet do you come from and what does money mean to you because that can't be right. Aside from the pineapple shape, which is awkward enough to store, at least it's not as bulky as previous holiday releases, which were like gigantic books. You 
they just take up so much space in your drawers. This palette here, I just can't wrap my head around because it is the exact same colors that were released last year for Tarte's Holiday Collection and the year before that. I don't think they've really changed any of the colors aside from maybe ordering them in a different way. So I don't understand why Tarte keeps coming out with the same holiday kit year after year. Some of you are probably going to say, Demetra, there are some people out there that have not purchased Tarte products in the past from their holiday collections, which is why they keep coming out with the same thing over and over again. And I totally get that. Maybe for somebody who is new to makeup, somebody who wants to try out Tarte for the first time, they're going to look at this palette and say, fantastic, I'm picking up this collection. Well, good on you. But this is my anti-haul video. <laughs> and all I'm saying is I won't be picking up this palette here. It makes no sense to me. I already have enough Tarte shadows. I don't want to invest any more in that brand. And to be quite honest with you, I'd rather see Tarte come out with something new, something different. Change up your eyeshadow formula. Use some different colors. Just do something different. Don't show me the same thing over and over again. Oops, I'm getting all fired up by these products. Oh, good Lord. The next two items that I have do come from Laura Mercier. The first item I'm going to talk about is an eyeshadow palette. It's called the Hidden Gems Palette. This is valued at 65 Canadian dollars and the first thing I actually wrote down in my notes is stop trying to be Natasha Denona and stop trying to copy Urban Decay's Born to Run. <laughs> because that is exactly what this palette looks like. I have zero desire in these colors. I have zero desire in the format of the palette. And quite honestly, I just dislike the Laura Mercier eyeshadow formula. There are so many other brands I'd rather put my money towards. This is one that I just don't want to touch. I really think Laura Mercier should just stick with complexion products. That is exactly what they're good at and that's what they need to capitalize on. And besides, $65 for this eyeshadow palette, that's hella overpriced. Same goes for the Nights Out palette. So it's this one here. It does have more of a jewel tone theme to it, but eh, it's still something that I have no desire in buying. I feel like I already have so many palettes with this color scheme and palettes that have a much better eyeshadow formula. This one just doesn't appeal to me and I'd rather keep the $65 in my pocket Pocket. I have two more items to talk about. The second to last item does come from Glam Glow. It is the Art of Glowing Skin Bubble Party Set. I guess these are face masks. They're valued at $24, which is very, very expensive for face masks. And the bubbling face masks, you can get so much more affordably from any other brand, especially if you are into Korean skincare, just go to a Korean brand, pick something up for a couple of bucks and you will be beyond ecstatic. Hell, go to Marshalls, go to Winners, they carry tons of them. Go pick them up, you can get like 10 for $4.99. $24 is just a little bit ridiculous for a price point. Plus, I've always found that anything that comes from Glam Glow usually dries out my skin tremendously, except for the Moisture Surge uh, Mask. I think that is one of their best products. I used to love the Super Mud Mask quite a bit as well, but now that I've discovered other products, I tend to lean to other items aside from the Glam Glow one. We now come to the last item that I am not going to be hauling this holiday season or ever again, and that is Charlotte Tilbury anything. <laughs> so it's not just one item, it's the entire brand. And y'all are probably sitting there going, what is wrong with you, Demetra? Have you not featured Charlotte Tilbury on your channel in the past? Well, yes, I have. And because of that, I never want to buy any Charlotte Tilbury products again. I'm quite fortunate to live in a metropolitan area. I am in Toronto and I do have lots of options available to me for purchasing Charlotte Tilbury products. So I have been able to get my hands on them in the past. I've played around with them and 
I just don't like them. Nothing ever really works for me. I've tried her magic cream in the past, which I'll be honest with you, was relatively decent. I could only use it in the extreme winter months when my skin was just peeling because of all of the cold wind and weather that was hitting me. And it was just okay. I still found it way overpriced. And now that I'm more educated on skincare, I know how to get better value out of other products and not spend $150 on a damn moisturizer. I've tried a couple of her mascaras in the past and every single time her mascaras fail me. I look like a damn raccoon that just got stuck outside in the rain. It looks like I have black soot that has just surrounded my eyes. I have dark circles from the mascara. It transfers, it flakes. They are just awful and don't work for me. I've tried one of her eyeshadow palettes in the past as well and I wasn't really impressed with that either. It was okay but again there are so many other more affordable eyeshadow formulas that I'd rather work with than spend my money on that crap. I do have one of her lipsticks in my collection. This is the Hot Lips collection. It is the Kim K W lipstick so it is this really sheer nude color and I've worn this in the past. Like it's a pretty color. Now can I actually sit here and say that this is a one of a kind color? Absolutely not. I can go through Maybelline, I can go through CoverGirl and find the exact same shade there and it won't dehydrate your lips because that's one thing I find with this lipstick. It looks pretty on but it dehydrates your lips so much. So unfortunately none of her products have worked for me in the past and I really wasn't that excited when Sephora said they were bringing Charlotte to products on board I was kind of like Mah. I am just not going to invest any more of my money into Charlotte Tilbury products moving forward. Whew, there we go. Those are all of the products that I am not hauling this holiday season. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Laugh a little. Don't take it too seriously. These are just my own thoughts about these items here. Some things just don't work for me, but if they work for you, amazing. If you love the products, fantastic. Have at it. I I just don't want to spend any of my money on these particular items. I really hope you guys enjoyed this anti-haul. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. You can also connect with me offline on my social media if you'd like by clicking on all the links in the description box below. I sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I hope you are having a spectacular spectacular day no matter where you are in the world. Stay beautiful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.